Okay, thank you for putting up with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, very quickly, what we'd like you to do right now is uh, find uh, one person to your left and right, kind of form uh, triads of some sort, read to each other, and talk about the issues that came up as you were doing this writing. We totally trust that you can do this, right? <laughs> um, and But really think about some questions and some of the issues that you think are going to come up as we introduce you to this program. Fair enough? So find a, two other people to talk to. <laughs> Actually, read what read what you wrote though. Stay with the text a little bit, okay? Uh, whatever you want to do, just try to. See. You can be a four if you want. That'll work. That's fine. That's fine. Educating for democracy requires students to be invited to be wrong. For students to be willing to be wrong, they need to feel safe enough to expose themselves, to be vulnerable. I think opportunities for helping students find their voice exist in today's digital world. Students feel safe exposing their feelings and thoughts on all kinds of social media. I don't know. What do you want to do? Stay in one person? Or? Well, or, yeah, I mean, uh, how do you use the information that inundates our daily lives? All citizens have a voice. That voice is easily projected on the internet. We need ways of interpreting interpreting those voices. Thus, education of our citizenry and citizenry is more important than ever. Uh, I started with education in the digital age, and I said educating in the digital age really highlights the changes in eras between old school and new school. When I was in the classroom as a teacher, cell phones were just coming into teenagers' hands, but they were flip phones, not smartphones, and now kids all have a multitude of options, smartphones, tablets, e-readers, Wi-Fi, you name it. This should be a blessing, but at first it was scary for teachers. It represented a loss of control because now kids could get the answers. They can text each other quiz questions or Google the answers, but really all this is doing is highlighting bad educational practices. So actually it was a great thing. It causes educators to reconsider the notion of a right answer or the teacher owning that answer. Now we embrace the exploration of information that comes with the digital era. Kids are probably even more savvy at it than we are, but we still conform to the old ways of showing them how. We still want to exercise that control. But that's not necessarily a negative thing, it's just that we know you can't easily be both young and old during the changing of the time. Working together, mentors, um, students, people who are learning, um, and while many of these questions are not necessarily new to the digital age, they are questions about values and how technology is about cultural values. Technology, I don't think, is ever neutral. Cool. Yeah, so these are questions. technology, but sometimes um, you can. You, We've seen other places, social media become effective political tools, little ace their own society, but at the same time it becomes not always the case that it's often it's often that way, but it can be not so productive sometimes mm -hmm. social media. And so I think it's good to us with the dilemmas. If you with educating in the digital age because that was the easiest thing for me to connect with. Was. That's all right. Um, no pressure at all. <laughs> so I started with educating the digital age, and I, I, I found myself. It says education, education in a digital, digital age is a double-edged edged sword. Are we educated enough to teach? Do I have the background knowledge? As I'm sitting here trying to connect my Bluetooth, which I couldn't do. Um, um, what is a blog? Why do we blog? Um, what about technology in the classroom? We want to teach with digital media, but do we have the technology to do that? So I see it as a challenge, and I ended it with a WTS hashtag Bluetooth. <laughs> Not good. So um, geography. And so democracy if it is meant to continue, is becoming known to everyone. Inevitably, it will be chosen or not by people everywhere. There are no teachers of democracy per se. The role isn't limited to a particular kind of person. Discernment of thought is perhaps a bit of a problem, but 
and my time is I have a laptop <laughs> card with Thank 16 and a smart board that has quite the attitude problem those days. Um, but I, and I wrote about that in my first entry too, is that, you know, I'm geeky as it is, and I feel geeked out when I when we watched the um, piece that Troy Hicks did this summer in the Central Arizona Writing Project and all these, you know, national gurus implementing all this technology and it's like our district doesn't offer PD and that mm -hmm. and I feel like Kat and I are at an advantage being able to attend the National Writing Project and the convention because we get to learn about what's going on on a, on a national level whereas you know, our big technology implementation, implementation this year is turnitin.com. You know, that's our district's big push, which is, which is cool. You know, that's great, but, but that's not, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to be for kids who don't go to college. You know, if I'm not on a college path or, or the colleges or universities who don't have a site license with that, and, and we have to have more options for kids besides that. When Turnitin.com doesn't offer that, I mean it offers collaboration for my students only, but you know, that bigger audience like like Twitter and right. Deck and all these other things, it doesn't offer that, you know, bigger audience, that other audience besides, you know, their classmates or me. Right, and so, you know, how do we, how do we get kids to write to that wider, wider audience and with all of the privacy issues that come with the they just want to know what the answer is. They don't want to think about what the answer could be themselves. They'll look in any book, they'll find it, they'll fill out any blank that I ask them to fill out. But if I ask them to think and express what they what they really believe, they don't really know how to do that. Because they've we school you know, we schooled that more to answer into that. I'm sorry. Which is a perfect moment, right? I mean what what we have right now can really is a, the, the a connection I make. It's like the Catholic Church before because you know, know the scientific so much evolution. You disagree with that it's a much the Catholic to Church told you what to think, what to do, when to do it. So what I just came out of the internet, you know, so what? And that's that's pretty Except awesome. Except the science of the least, exact same time. Uh, science girl, oh, that just came off the New York Times. So what? Uh, that just came uh, off of. Uh, Al Jazeera, so obviously we can't Thinking trust that. It, yes. Now we may have circled around. You know, the divide. We 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 circled around. Because we've, 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 circled around. Because we've been exposed to all of these thing, opportunities to either agree with or disagree I, with what's in print. I, think that I really like how it's now being taught to ask our students what is the author trying to teach you about this topic. To it isn't. What is the truth? Find their votes. It is what is the author trying to get you to feel safe enough to do that. So that right there invites you to either agree or disagree or work with the arguments.